Good morning, almost afternoon. It's Rebecca here from the Dual Toolbox, and I am here to chat with you today about three things for you to think about before you start marketing on Instagram. Let me just adjust this so I'm not wiggling around everywhere. So we've talked about this before, and lots of questions come up in our free community about how to use Instagram and the best way to kind of be seen and grow your following and so on and so forth. So one of the things that we always tell people first is you don't have to actually use Instagram in your business. And we often think that just because we see other people doing something that we have to do it too. So before we dive into any of this, I want to just preface it by saying, if Instagram isn't your thing, don't feel like you have to use it to market your business. I keep getting the <laughs> ring from my light and it's distracting me. Um, don't feel like you have to use Instagram. So I put together this live and the tips in this live just because I want for you to think about before committing to using Instagram for marketing, these are some things that I want for you to consider if it's something that you truly want to use to be a part of your marketing strategy or your buzz strategy, right? So when you choose something for your marketing, we really want for you to dive in and utilize it, right? So if you're just choosing the one thing, then these are the things that you're going to have to kind of think about committing to if you start using Instagram for marketing or if you're already there and you've already decided like this is my jam and I want to learn how to, you know, get into this more. Then these are the three things that I would want for you to think about that you're going to need to commit to if you want Instagram to really work for you. So let's dive right in. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments and um, I'm going to kind of go through. I'll stop in between each point and answer anything that might be coming up, but I'll just kind of get through each section just so that without uh, much interruption. So what we're going to talk about is number one, using what Instagram provides for us. So the tools that are already there, we're going to talk about getting some IG pals. So this is kind of along the same lines as passion partners and really growing your community. Um, and last but not least, we're going to talk about making the time that you spend on Instagram count. So being careful not to go down that rabbit hole and really utilizing your time and making the most out of it. So let's dive into using the tools that they provide. I think this is one of the most important things that you should be including in your strategy. And here's the thing. A lot of us think that Instagram is kind of working against us and we all get really frustrated when there's an algorithm change and we, we see lower engagement and so on and so forth. The thing that Instagram is great for is that it's really protective of its users. So when we see an algorithm change, that's because they want us to be engaging authentically. They want real people to be following us. We want to they we they want us to be following real people, and so on and so forth. Because there are so many third-party apps and there are so many people buying followers and buying comments and all that kind of stuff. And so when there's a change, it's because they're really cracking down. So when we see lower engagement on our stuff, it's it just sound like a good thing, but it is a good thing because the engagement that we are getting is authentic and it's real because Instagram is really picking up on authentic posts, relevant hashtags and relevant content to kind of what images that we're posting and so on and so forth. So we'll dive into that just a little bit today. Um, so we'll start out with what they provide. So you guys know on Instagram there are three different options for sharing content. We've got our feed, We've got Instagram stories, and we also have IGTV, which scares the bejeevers out of some people. <laughs> Same with stories. Um, but Instagram provides all of this stuff for us, right? So the more we dive in and use what Instagram gives us, the more likely they are going to be to help us out, right? So if you're using Instagram stories, not a lot of people utilize Instagram stories yet. We've kind of dabbled in it and we're still working out our strategy, but because not a ton of people, it seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things and like all of the Instagram users that are out there, there aren't a lot of people still utilizing Instagram or IGTV, I should say. So if we take that for an example, if you dove into IGTV and made it a huge part of your strategy, you would probably see 
quicker growth than if you weren't using it just because Instagram kind of rewards people for using using the things that they provide especially if it's something new if you see instagram put out something new so i would say i think one of the most recent things is group chats so you can access those in your stories and we'll go through the different things available in your stories if you utilize the newest features that they put out then they're going to kind of reward you and help to push your content along because they want to see how that app is going to work out or how that new tool is going to work out so the more people using it it's giving them more feedback and they're like, okay, yeah, let's keep helping this person out and let's see how this tool is going to perform. So that would be um, a tip to write down and remember if you're using Instagram on the regular, anytime you see something brand new dropped, get on it, like start using it as soon as you can and start working it into your strategy as soon as you can. So let's talk about Instagram stories first. So, one of we've got gifts and like different things that you can use there but what i want to encourage you to do is to include the engagement stickers in your strategy so a couple of times a week at least i want for you to be thinking about adding a poll sticker adding um a multiple choice so you guys see all this when you when you log on and you go to make a story so let's say i'm going to make something new here and then so if I'm going to the create it, the create part and I press the little sticker at the top and you guys can see that you've got all of your options here. Don't mind my ring light here. It just makes me look a little bit better. <laughs> um, so I would highly recommend that you are using the poll feature. You can see it up here. This little guy is pretty good and super easy for people to engage with you. The questions, so you guys see that a lot. And then as well as you can see right in the middle here, this is the group chat option and it's one of the newest features. And then also the quiz option. So anything that encourages somebody to take action on what you're putting out, it doesn't have to be anything big. Like the quiz can be like, you know, what brand of diapers do you prefer to use? And then you just have, um, you have the different options there or you know what kind of birth did you have and you have your different options there right so it can be something super simple you don't have to have a huge lead-in or a long story attached to it just toss something up a couple of times a week and get people to start engaging with you that's going to tell Instagram that people are interested in what you put out and the benefits with stories is that they are um, they're highly deliverable so it means that it means that if you, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. It means that your content will be delivered to both your followers and people who don't follow you. So if you are active in your stories and people are engaging with your stories, it's going to tell Instagram that you are somebody who people are interested in and it's going to start sending you traffic and help you out. So at least a couple times a week, that's the action that I want you to take on this particular tip. Schedule it in a couple of times a week uh, to use one of the engagement type stickers in your stories. So maybe you're going to start using every Friday as your ask me anything day and you can use the question sticker and you can pop on on Friday and say, all right, it's ask me anything Friday, go ahead and pop it in there. And the benefit of that is that it gives you content to continue posting in your stories, right? So when people answer you, you can take their answers and post them and kind of put your own response or kind of decorate that that particular answer up a little bit. And so it just kind of is a revolving, you guys can see how it just, it continues to go if you, and you can continue to use the content that goes out there. It also, as a bonus, is a really great way for you to do research and really get to know your ideal customer and your audience. So when you're using IG stories, I want for you to use those stickers, commit to using them just a couple of times a week. You don't have to show up live and talk in video if you're not there yet, but I encourage you to just kind of start with that strategy and just start using, using what's there. And so in terms of live IG, so the difference between IGTV and then IG live in your stories is that IGTV is kind of a separate um, spot for you to click through. You can pre-record videos and load them up to IGTV, whereas the IG lives, it's still a part of your stories um, and they still disappear after 24 hours unless you save them. So you have the ability to save them. Um, 
before. So if you're doing your live, when you put when you push end, you'll be taken to a screen that asks you what you want to do with the post. So if you want to actually go ahead and post it um, so that it's still live for 24 hours, and then at the top there will be a little download arrow that will ask you if you want to save your live. So you can certainly do that and then repurpose it somewhere else. If it's less than 10 minutes, if your live on IG stories is less than 10 minutes, then you should save it and then repurpose it into an IGTV story so that it's you know, this content is still gonna be there. It's not gonna disappear on you after 24 hours. So, so that's a really amazing benefit of using live. Another amazing benefit is, of course, you can just get on and talk in real time with people, right? So whenever you're live, you guys will notice, let me see if it has one at the beginning right now. It doesn't. Um, but you can see where the stories are above there. Hello, some of you who are watching are right in my story feed. Um, but you can see if there if there as a live to watch, then there will be kind of a more like a black circle around there, and it'll kind of show you that somebody has a live um, that's available to watch. So it's great because it also Instagram also alerts people when there is something to watch. But if you get there, and I encourage you to keep practicing and working on it. But if you get there. Doing lives is such a great way to engage with people in real time and just kind of let them know that you're you're like you're actually there, right? So they're not just watching something that you know that it's been posted a while ago. It's like happening and they can pop on and they can ask you questions and you can engage right there. So it's a really good feature to use. And if again, if it's under 10 minutes, you can save it and repurpose it into an IGTV. Once it's repurposed into an IGTV, you can repurpose the IGTV into a post in your feed. So you can see how spending 10 minutes of your time doing one thing, so an IG Live, can turn into three different part pieces of content. So you're placing it in three different places for people to be able to access and interact with and engage with. So I highly suggest you consider starting some lives. They can be super simple. It could just be a quick tip. It could just be like, you know, I'm, I'm at this place and talking about wherever you are, talking about a place in your community. There's so many ways that you can, you can do that. Uh, all right. So last but not least, oh, I think that's kind of it. Oh, no. In your stories, I want for you to remember using hashtags and location tags. So as I said before, IG stories is highly discoverable, which means that followers and non-followers can see your content and it will be delivered to non-followers. So if you are somewhere and you're using a story, just don't forget to use that location hashtag You can or that location option. You are allowed to use it one time in your feed or one time per story. So you guys can see here, it's just the beginning one there, right? So wherever you are, put that location in there. You can hide it if you don't want it to kind of mess up your theme so or kind of mess up what you've created. So if you put a sticker on there, if you have a picture on there, then all you have to do is put the location sticker on top and then just tap the picture that you want covering it and then it's covered, right? But you'll still show up. The tag is still there. You're just hiding it. And you can do the same thing for hashtags as well. We go over this a little bit in um, the bonus material in our Instagram masterclass. Um, well, I go over it a lot more actually, but you are allowed up to 10 hashtags in a story. Um, and again, I highly encourage you to use a couple. I wouldn't necessarily use all 10, but I would use a couple because when people search for certain hashtags, you come up like your actual story comes up that has the hashtag in it. So um, I would definitely, whenever you are somewhere, use that location option um, and it just really helps people place you in different you know places around your community so that's it for the first one use what they provide so i'm just going to look at the comments here and we will so tisha hello i have a hard time getting people to engage on my story so um hopefully you're still here 10 tags to oh yeah thanks erica one second um i'm not sure if you're still here but I would just, you, you have to keep going. Think about questions that like people can answer easily or that, that are just kind of fun, right? So it's so, 
it's hard to resist participating when somebody puts a question thing up or even just that little kind of sliding heart. If you have a hard time getting people to engage, then just make it super simple. Use the sliding heart one. So let me just come back here. So use the sliding heart one right over here and people can just easily swipe, right? That's still considered engagement and somebody taking action on your content. Um, but then also, the poll is a super easy one to use. So right here, sorry, oops, I'll show you which one I chose there. So right here, the poll, so it's different than the, I always get it confused with multiple choice, but the poll's there. This one's a super easy one to use. So you can ask the question here, or you can already kind of have it written out on your post. And then in these little spots where yes or no, you can put your own answers, right? So we'll, you'll often see this in our stories and we'll ask a question or we'll be talking about something. Um, and we'll put like, you know, heck yes, or we just change the yes and no to just kind of make it a little bit more fun. Um, so Tasha, all I would say is just keep doing it. Just keep being consistent with it. Um, and you'll start to see some, we put some stuff out where we don't get a ton of engagement and then other questions, we get tons of responses. So it's really just kind of, you know, throwing that spaghetti at the wall and seeing what's going to stick. So I would say if it's not working for you yet, just stick with it. Right. Um, we often say, and I know this is going to sound maybe a little bit disheartening, but we often say, give something anywhere between 30 and 90 days for it to really kind of pick up and start start picking up. So as long as you're being consistent in your stories and then using those things consistently, it will start to show and it will start convert. I'm sure that anybody who's watching who maybe started out on stories and now um, it does really well in them will probably tell you they didn't just start out automatically, you know, everything kind of rolling and everybody engaging with them right away, right? So try and stick with it, girl. Um, and then Erica's just mentioning, yep, you can put up to 10 tags in your story too. So in terms of um, tagging, so you can put one location tag, you can use up to 10 hashtags, and then you can also tag up to 10 people. So um, some of it you may want to kind of hide behind stickers and stuff. Usually when you're tagging a person, it's kind of fun to put the tag over the person or, or like in relation to something that you're posting. So good tip. So let me know in the comments um, what you use. Like what's your favorite tool to use? If you're already using stuff, I would love to know what works best for you using the tools that they provide. All right, so we're gonna move on to number two here. And this is really all about kind of creating a community of professionals. So um, we're calling this one, get some gram buds. So I just want for you to know that you're not alone in working your Instagram strategy, right? So it's a really good idea to just kind of pay attention to who is in your space in terms of kind of fellow professionals. Ideally, they would have the same um, ICA as you, but they don't necessarily have to. So I'm talking local businesses, I'm talking maybe other birth workers, I'm talking um, other birth professionals, so maybe birth photographers and so on and so forth. But just kind of, I don't know, <laughs> creep on. Check out the other people who are in your same space and who are working it and using Instagram in their marketing as like a consistent marketing strategy, right? It's so much easier and better when you have the support of other people who are on there all the time. They're tagging you, you're tagging them, and you're all just kind of working together to get a message out and to build community and to engage with people on there. So I've been seeing a few um, posts lately. I know one of our doula bosses, Karina, just met one of her, um, you know, Instagram, I can't remember what she called her, but she, so she basically met somebody that she had been following with and engaging with in real life a couple of days ago. And so that was just a really fun thing to follow and watch. And it really, um, it really, I love it as a consumer watching when I'm seeing kind of the people that I follow connecting with other professionals as well. So it just kind of shows me that they're active in the community and they care about kind of creating this circle of support. So it's much easier working on Instagram when you have a group of people or a couple of people who have your back and who are sharing your content and you're sharing their content and you can just reach out to one another. It also boosts your algorithm if you have someone who you're consistently having conversations with on Instagram. So you might 
solely have your conversations with these people in your DMs. And that is just, again, telling Instagram, like you're a busy person and maybe you're somebody who um, might be of interest to other people. So they'll help push your content along. Just remember that social platforms are for being social. So a lot of the times, and this kind of mixes in with our third point, but a lot of times we'll find ourselves on Instagram just kind of scrolling through and not really engaging much or doing much. But the whole point of it is to be social and is to get out there and just kind of be your authentic self. So don't forget to just reach out and comment on other people's stuff. I know that it picks up, the algorithm picks up and I know that we want our ideal customers following us and we want our stuff being pushed to them as well, um, which we talk about a lot in our Instagram masterclass. We actually create a whole system um, for doing that without wasting a lot of your time by having an actual plan for doing that. But you want the algorithm, yes, to push you to your ideal client, but you also want to be showing up around your community, right? So you wanna be showing up in other local businesses uh, feeds and you wanna be showing up because that keeps you top of mind. Think about a business and how many people in a day they talk to, right? If you're always showing up in their feed um, and engaging with them and just kind of having a good relationship online, the likelihood of them kind of having a conversation with somebody who maybe is expecting or maybe is talking about that the likelihood of them mentioning you and saying, oh, I follow this really amazing person on Instagram, you should check them out, and so on and so forth, right? So the more you create those relationships with those people on Instagram, the more likely it is that they're gonna send people either online to you or talk about you in real life, in person, right? So just think about Instagram as being a great place for networking with other business professionals as well. As much as it is, it is about connecting with our ICA, it's also about connecting with other professionals and just creating that networking community um, and that kind of referral source. So let me know in the comments, you guys, if you have anyone on Instagram that you kind of met through Instagram, maybe you've met them in real life now, and maybe they've become a really great part of your community, and maybe they refer people to you, and so on and so forth. So if you've been able to kind of create those relationships, um, maybe just mention that in the comments and encourage other people, maybe give a tip of how that works for you, whatever, so on and so forth. Oh my gosh, I'm missing all these comments. <laughs> all right Erica yes weekdays seem to get more engagement yeah weekends are busy a lot of people um they just are tending to put their phones away on the weekend um share where you're eating yeah so these are good tips for you to I'm sorry I hope I'm saying your name right to Tisha <laughs> um Erica's just saying like just share whatever's happening share where you're eating or meeting someone people love to know where you are in the community they absolutely do because um, they can place themselves there, right? So if they're there, they could be like, oh, you know, I've been there before. Or oftentimes I'll see, especially with Erica, <laughs> Erica's all over her community. And I'm always like, where is that? I've never heard of that. And it always looks like such a fun place. So it can really build community if you all of do, if you do that. Um, and Erica's just saying here that she connected with a new family doctor on Instagram. She was telling me about that before. So that's it. That is an amazing referral source, right? So yeah, just stay active and just start talking to people. It kind of like you, when you start doing it, it feels a little bit creepy. I remember when we did the engagement challenge quite a few months ago now, and a few of you were kind of saying, I feel, I feel kind of weird just talking to people that I don't know. But again, remember, it's a social platform and it's kind of meant if somebody wanted to kind of hide their stuff and remain private, then they would have their, their account would be private, right? So don't feel too worried about um, engaging, especially with businesses. Businesses are on there doing the same thing as you. They want to connect and they want to engage with people just as much as you do. So we have to kind of start changing that mindset of like, oh no, somebody might be doing a favor for me to like, it's always mutual. It's always 100% mutual when you are reaching out to somebody, you're adding value to them and their community and vice versa. So if you kind of feel a little bit weird about talking to other professionals or feeling like 
you know, you're, you're kind of creeping on them or you're just trying to get them to share your stuff. Like, yes, you are. And that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that because they're probably going to want the same in return. And it's just going to be a mutual sharing of information and building of community. And really at the end of the day, that's what this is all about, right? All right. Number three, make the time that you spend on the app count. So there are so many ways that we can talk about engaging with people. And in fact, we do get into that. Again, that's a huge part of the masterclass. And by the end of that masterclass, I'm going to talk about it a little bit at the end, by the way. But by the end of that masterclass, you will have an engagement strategy and you will know all of the places to go and how to um, get busy engaging with your ideal customer. But for now, what I want to talk about is the time that you spend on the app. So, I mean, give me a yes in the comments if you ever find yourself just scrolling and not even not even liking anything anymore. Like it's gotten to the point now where that's another reason why engagements is low. A lot of people right now, they just scroll and they don't even like things anymore. So if you're guilty of that, um, you're not alone. I definitely have found myself doing that. But here's the thing, even if you are doing that, so even if that's all you're doing and it is a little bit of engagement, 100%, but it's not enough to show Instagram exactly what you're interested in and who you want to hear from and where you want your content delivered, right? So it is so much better for you to spend 20 minutes engaging with 10 people than it is to spend 20 minutes liking a hundred different posts, right? That's not getting you anywhere. You're not connecting with anybody in that sense. So I want for you to really think about when you get on Instagram, pay attention to what you're doing. So before you even make any changes, just kind of have it in your head that the next time you, the next time you get on there, what are you doing? How are you spending your time? So um, it's good to like post 100%. You don't have to comment on every single thing you like, but I encourage you to mix it up. So like a couple posts and then stop and comment and then like a few more posts and then stop and comment, right? So it just show it's good for the algorithm 100%. We, that's, you know, the name of the game on Instagram is kind of pleasing the, the algorithm. But at the end of the day, it's also about connecting with people. And it's a lot easier to connect with people when you're actually engaging with them and responding to something. And I will sit here and do 20 minutes of engagement and almost always nearly everybody that I engage with either likes my comment or comments back. So even if somebody just likes your comment, that's like a huge alert to Instagram saying like, oh, valuable information, or this person likes this. So if they like that, then the likelihood of you showing up in their feed over the next few days is much higher than if you just simply like their post, right? So if you comment, and then they just tap that little tiny heart right beside your comment, then that's an alert to Instagram that, hey, this is somebody who wants to see content from this person. So it pleases the algorithm and it also pleases your community and makes people feel seen and heard and connected to. So I highly encourage you the next time you're scrolling through Instagram to number one, pay attention to how you're spending your time. Are you just going through people's stories and letting it go? like letting it flow all the way through or are you stopping and engaging? Are you sending like a little reaction to their story or are you making a comment about their story that about something that maybe relates to you? Um, I encourage you to pay attention and then make that change in terms of, okay, so instead of just sitting here liking a whole bunch of posts, I'm just going to comment on a few. So, and again, the engagement strategy we dive into in the master class, um, but this is just a super simple change that you could make right now that would make a difference in your Instagram strategy. All right, so I wanted to include a little bit of a bonus tip here as well, um, because I find one of the questions that comes up a lot is that people just aren't sure what to post, and that's a huge, that's a whole other topic in and of itself. Um, but I wanted to just give you this one tip. A lot of times, because we don't know what, what to post, we're just kind of taking things that we've learned or sharing stuff from other people, and the content doesn't necessarily feel relatable. So we have to be able to bridge that gap and marry 
storytelling and creating relatable content with kind of educating and informing people, right? Because you want to be doing that. People, that's the point, right? You want people to know what a doula does and what the benefits are and just the different things, you know, surrounding birth and prenatal and postpartum and all that kind of stuff, right? So I understand that we want to educate, but we have to make that education relatable. We have to make it in a way that it's going to grab somebody's attention. So I just jotted down a couple of um, potential caption starters that you could that you could think about. We want to draw people in right from those first few lines on the caption, right? Because as you are scrolling, whoops, let's get back to Instagram here. So as you're scrolling through Instagram, you guys can see you just see, oh, see, look at that. I mentioned ring light in this video and look at the ad that I'm getting. Isn't that hilarious? Um, you can see, you just see the first few lines of each caption, right? So what you want, those are the most important lines of your caption, right? Because that's what's going to grab somebody's attention and get them to click those three little buttons to read the rest of what you've written. So I want for you to think about captions that immediately relate to someone or that they can kind of go, oh yeah, I, f I felt frustrated with that too or whatever, right? So a couple of examples might be blank used to really frustrate me until and then you go into whatever your story is, right? So um, whatever, like think about something that did frustrate you maybe when you were expecting or when you were, or when you had a newborn or something like that. So, you know, for me, I might say, um, you know, people's unsolicited advice used to really frustrate me until, and then, you know, maybe I could go into a solution or a mindset or a way to deal with that, right? So something that you have seen um, to be a frustration either for yourself or for your ideal customer um, or client, sorry, and then and then you kind of go into it, right? So if you can kind of start out by something that like they can relate to that, like I felt that frustration too. I want to know a little bit more about what they did about it or, you know, learn a little bit more about the fresh, that particular frustration, right? So you can see how that, instead of just starting out like sometimes we get unsolicited advice, you can see how the other way you're attaching an emotion to it and you're relating to somebody right off the bat when you word it that way. So um, another example could be, tell me the last time you whatever, right? So if you kind of, that's kind of drawing someone else, it's a little bit of a hook and then they want to open it up and say, well, I want to tell them the last time I did whatever <laughs> and they'll open it up and check out what it is you guys are chatting about, right? Um, you know, other ones could just be straight, a hook could look straight up like, I wonder if you can relate to this. And then, you know, that's kind of tweaking somebody's attention and getting them to open up that, that um, caption and check it out and see what you're talking about. So just the difference between just kind of starting a, a caption, just talking about, you know, whatever it is your topic is, as opposed to kind of relating to a feeling or drawing out an emotion from somebody that immediately connects them to you and the post, they relate to it and they wanna know a little bit more, right? Because we all have that sense of wanting to belong and wanting to be understood. And the best way for somebody to feel understood is for you to say, hey, I've been there or I understand um, and let's talk about it, right? So just consider just making that little change to the beginning parts of your captions and you're gonna get a lot more people opening it up and checking out what you have to say. All right, you guys, so we covered Instagram tools using what they provide. We covered talking, getting involved in your community in terms of just being super active in local businesses and other um, birth professionals and whether you end up creating like a, a relationship with each other where you end up meeting or, or have lots of conversations, at the very least, just showing up um, in their feeds, making comments, liking their stuff, and so on and so forth, is going to start putting you top of mind to those people if you start doing it regularly. And then last but not least, making the time that you're spending on Instagram count. So instead of liking 100 posts as you're going through, uh, I want for you to consider spending that time 
Maybe it's going to look like a little less engagement to you, but it's going to go a lot further, number one, with the people that you are engaging with, and then also number two, with Instagram. So I want to give you a little bit of a challenge here, you guys. I want for you to commit to the next five days to showing up in your stories. It doesn't have to be video, but I want for you to show up your stories in your stories and use one of the engagement stickers. So maybe you'll use one of the engagement stickers every single day, but just start getting yourself into the habit of showing up and using the stickers. If you're using ones where people are putting in answers, try and give yourself a reminder to check the answers. Um, and then let me see if we still, oh, we still don't have one. I was going to show you where you check your answers, but if you're not sure, just let me know and I can, I can figure that out for you. But, um, check your answers and share them. So <laughs> I have to put reminders for myself because a lot of times we'll ask a question and then I'll forget to post the answers and people want to know. And of course they disappear after 24 hours. So you got to remind yourself of that. But for the next five days, I want for you to show up in your stories and utilize one of those engagement stickers and maybe switch it up every single day. Um, but maybe tag us. You can hide the tag if you want, but tag us so that we know that you're doing it and we can help you out and engage with you. Um, but I want for you to maybe just try that strategy. So that one. And then number two, the second challenge that I have for you is to pay attention to how you're spending your time on Instagram. I want for you to put your timer on. Maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 20 minutes, and just pay attention to kind of what you're drawn to. If you're drawn to checking out people's stories, then just make the effort to engage, like send a reaction to a story or just send a little reply more often than not, people reply. Like we do it uh, almost every single day and our DM is full of people just kind of, it's just a quick little back and forth conversation. It doesn't have to be, you know, a super long lasting thing, but you also never know where a conversation is going to lead. So that's your second challenge. Pay attention to what you are doing when you open up the app and try to just make that little adjustment to spend that time engaging as opposed to just liking and just scrolling through and checking out what's there. All right. And then last but not least, the third challenge that I have for you is to find three local businesses and maybe for the next three days, maybe for the next five days when you're doing your um, Instagram stories, you can make a commitment to go over and comment either on their stories or on their feed or something that they put out. So three local businesses or three other local um, birth professionals that w that you could kind of relate to or maybe share the same ideal client. So I'm going to rewrite those challenges in the in the post when I'm all done this video and then feel free to kind of tag us or hop into the community and let us know when you've done it. Um, but I would really love to see you guys taking a couple of action steps from some of the stuff that we've talked about here today. And thank you, Erica. I love these tips too. And they're things that we always have to remind ourselves of too, because it's tricky because Instagram and Facebook, like you can just get sucked into a rabbit hole so quick if you are not intentional with your time and intentional with what you are doing. So um, I highly recommend just giving these couple things a try and I promise you're going to see something. You will see some sort of reaction or it will start to kind of feel like a little more fun than just sitting there and scrolling through, right? All right, so last but not least, I'm going to just talk quickly about our Instagram masterclass that we have coming up on Friday, on Saturday, February the 8th. So that is not this weekend, but next weekend. So we did a live Instagram, kind of a three-day masterclass, or yeah, I think we called it a masterclass. It was last summer-ish, um, and it was amazing. It was so fun, and the doulas that we had um, participating in that particular masterclass really got a lot out of it. And they, I liked how we set it up in terms of just having it like a live live event as opposed to creating a course that you have to go through and kind of take action on your own. The live element of it allowed us to interact with people as we were teaching and it also allowed for them to actually create a strategy alongside us and then take it and implement it right away which is exactly what happened. So that um, so that 
really helped out and it was different from any kind of course that we've put out in terms of us seeing um, action being taken and results being achieved. So we're doing something similar. It's not going to be three days because we just wanted to, you know, take as little of your time as possible, but have you end up with an implementable strategy on just diving into Instagram. Now, this masterclass is for you if Instagram is something that you want to get better at. If Instagram is something that you want to um, create a strategy around and use in your marketing, then this masterclass is for you, right? So we are diving in and making sure that by the end of it, you have a strategy. So here's the things that we're going to be covering in the masterclass. There's three elements. The class is two hours. Um, the first thing we're doing is actually, I should show you guys. I, uh, oh, I can't share my screen. Sorry. I will take a screenshot of it though and I'll show you. Um, so the first element that we are covering is content. So content creation and putting it into a strategy and putting it into a whole content library for yourself so that you have something to draw from every time you sit down and start planning out your, um, planning out your Instagram. So we do, we're doing this. <laughs> what am I doing here? We're doing this by an Instagram or using a Trello board. So we've created a Trello board for doulas. If you haven't heard of Trello before, again, I'll take a picture and I'll just show you what that's going to look like. Um, but essentially we're showing you all the places to go to find your content. So content is the biggest sticking point for people. We always hear, I don't know what to post. How do I know what to post? How do I come up with content? So once we go through this with you in the masterclass, it's a question you are never going to ask yourself again. You're going to be able to go right to your content board and pull out, pull out your different ideas and pull out the different things that you can use in your Instagram strategy. So that's part one of the masterclass. We're going to be spending time showing you where to go and look. And then of course we'll take a quick break for you guys to actually take action and start filling up your board. So you're going to get the link to this Trello board and you'll be able to copy it and make it your own. So it's not going to be filled with all the other dualist stuff who are also part of the masterclass. You're going to create the link. It's going to be your own board and you're going to start creating a content library for yourself. All right. So the second part is creating an engagement strategy. So we're calling this a trend proof strategy for this reason. If you are engaging and connecting with people on Instagram, you are winning. I promise you that. If you are relying on hashtags alone or just being consistent, those things are important and they definitely have a role in your Instagram strategy. But if you are not engaging with people and actually networking and talking with people, then you are missing out on a huge opportunity to be able to relate to people, connect with them, and just really let them know who you are and what you're about and how you can help them or someone that they know, right? So we've done an engagement challenge in the Dual Toolbox before, and it went really well. Um... So we're going to show you specific places that you can look to engage with people and how to figure out who to talk to and how to find your ideal customer. And then we're going to teach you a strategy so that it's not an all time consuming thing. So when I talk about, um, you know, spending time engaging on Instagram, we, a lot of people kind of, well, I don't have time for that and so on and so forth. We totally get it. We all have busy lives. So this strategy is created for you to spend 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. It's really up to you on Instagram, posting, engaging, doing your thing, and then you're off, right? And so if you totally commit to that strategy, then you could just be spending about 20 minutes a day and actually making progress and actually seeing things happen on your Instagram. So that's number two, we're covering an engagement strategy. And then last but not least, we're pulling it all together and helping you create an actual method of operation for all of these things. So it's not kind of like a one time you're going to create your strategy and, um, and then you've got it, right? Once you create the strategy, you have to work your strategy. So the last part of the masterclass is designed to help you kind of 
put those time blocks into your schedule and to help you just do things consistently so that when you sit down, it's not one big overwhelming job, but you already have a lot of the work done because you've dedicated a little bit of time to it either each day or once a week. And then you can go back to it and you have so much to pull from and it'll be just so much easier for you to plan ahead have it ready to go so that instead of wondering what to post, you can be thinking about engaging, building your community and just being seen, right? So that's the that's kind of the goal. That's the outcome of the masterclass. Tiesha, the masterclass is two hours long, so it'll be from one to three. At the end of it, there will be an opportunity for some Q&A. And then the masterclass itself, once we're all done, it's loaded into your student area which is where all of your bonuses are at the moment. So they're already there. We have bonuses that dive a little bit deeper into all the three things that we talked about today. So we're talking about your framework and they're just all, I think the longest video, there's three videos and the longest one is I think 25 minutes. So we made them so that they could kind of be short things that you can do. It, again, it's not a course, it's just extra information for you. So though the bonuses are um, we're talking about your Instagram framework. So we talk about themes. We talk about your bio. And we talk about those things in your framework. Number two, we have um, an intro to Instagram stories. So we just dive a little bit deeper into some of the things that we talked about today. And then the third video is about using hashtags. So we cover a hashtag strategy, um, how to make your hashtags relevant to your post, and just to make sure that Instagram doesn't flag you for you know, using using hashtags that don't have anything to do with your content, which is a common innocent mistake that we all make. Um, and then we also talk about the number of hashtags you use and how to use ones that are relevant and how to get found using hashtags. So those are three bonus videos that are available to you right away. As soon as you sign up, you'll get your access to the student area. And those things are there waiting for you so that you have something to kind of work on while you're waiting for the masterclass to happen on February 8th. So that is exactly what the masterclass is all about. It's meant to give you, you know, the best kind of strategy and the best tools to take immediate action in the least amount of time. So we didn't want to, again, we didn't want to create a course that you had to like carve out time for and, you know, make a commitment to and have homework and all this kind of stuff. We created this masterclass so that we can teach you the information. You can have the opportunity to actually work on it and take action right away while we're in the masterclass. And by the end of it, you will have your strategy and be ready to go and start implementing right away. And then of course, all that information is going to still be available to you in your student area um, forever and always. <laughs> so, so that's just a little bit about the masterclass. You guys, we have some amazing partners who are supporting us um, in this promotion. We really wanted to um, kind of give the opportunity to some people who work very closely with us to also help get the word out. And it's a way for you to also maybe support some of your other doulas um, who you have found to be maybe an inspiration to you or uh, who've been helpful to you in some way or another. So I want for you to um, check those people out. We'll actually tag them in this as well. But I want for you to check out, you know, what they're offering. A lot of them are offering their own kind of bonuses. If you, if you, uh, register for this masterclass using their links so definitely check out who is offering um, who has their own link for this masterclass and just maybe what they're offering because it's just an opportunity for you guys to learn from each other and then to also support each other um, in terms of just the whole community building when we all work together we just get the word out more and we are able to um, just help people understand what doulas are and just really make it help for doulas to become the norm, right? Just something that people don't even think about. They just know that they need a doula. And so that's the ultimate goal um, that we're all after here. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Amanda, thanks so much. I'm new to IG. So, oh, I'm so glad this helped Amanda. Um, and if you feel like you want any more information, again, I'm going to link to 
the master class here and I'm also going to let you know who else is a part of this promotion so that if there's somebody specific that you want to support then you can definitely register for the master class through their link all right so thanks again everybody for watching I love doing this I'm looking forward to being live with you in the master class to just really dive in and get some work done together so I will see you guys later thank you so much bye bye